Hi, my name is Dylan Hong, and I worked on a mixed reality green screen project as a summer intern for the company PTC. The academic department has been working on the space called the Convergence Lab. The Convergence Lab is a place where people can design and build virtual experiences. This will primarily be done by simulating and testing augmented reality experiences in virtual reality. When watching demos of virtual reality, I noticed a major disconnect with the conceptual model of the person in the headset when compared to the people observing. People are often surprised because they don't realize that the system places the user in a fully generated and immersive world. Virtual reality is amazing and immersive, but only for the person with the headset on. This is what you feel like when you're using VR. You're able to experience and interact with a completely immersive world and it's genuinely incredible. You feel fully aware and in charge as if the virtual environment were the real world. However, this is what you look like to everybody else in the room. The most popular way to observe a virtual reality experience is to view the user's perspective on an external monitor. This causes observers to have a hard time piecing together the environments in their heads as they're trying to understand a 3D space from the first person perspective of somebody else. And our brains just don't work that way. This makes things like marketing and selling VR experiences a bit more difficult, but it also hinders the development of VR software and usability testing, which are goals of PTCs within the Convergence Lab. This summer, I was fully able to build out my proof of concept using equipment that our department already had on hand and some equipment that I personally own. Building out the setup was a pretty exciting process. First, I made sure we had all of the standard virtual reality hardware and a computer that's capable of running VR. Additionally, I needed a green screen so I would be able to key out the background, an HD capture card so I could stream the output from my camera into the computer live time, and then I found a third motion controller that I could mount onto my camera which allowed me to track the position of the camera in real space. Once I had all of the hardware set up, I had to install the appropriate drivers and software. This included drivers that allow the computer to read input from the capture card and OBS, which is an open source program that can live time layer and key video sources. I also had to go into the game files and set up configuration files that instruct the software to position the in-game camera according to the motion tracked camera's position. This last step took a really large amount of time to configure. Playing with all of the values to try to closely match the hardware and software cameras took many hours of testing and it's still not perfect. Once all of the software was fully set up, I was able to force games to launch in a developer mode that output a keyable foreground layer and a background layer. I then sandwiched the two layers around the real world image that's being keyed out. And this is how the image looks live time. I wasn't using a broadcast capable camera, so the image quality is poor and the keying isn't perfect, but it was a huge success in being able to visually translate motion tracking data and show mixed reality working with my limited setup. Using the same setup, I was able to export the individual layers all at a 1080p resolution, then combine them in post using Final Cut Pro 10 to clean up the keying and create a higher quality shot. I was super happy with the footage I was able to extract, but I was still curious to see if I could improve the quality of the live time feed and take advantage of the motion tracked camera. So I got in contact with the people who run the video studio at PTC to see if we could do a test run. I took a day and did my whole setup and process in a video studio with a broadcast capable camera, much much more green screen, and a rig that allowed for the camera to go fully mobile. Because of my limited time, I didn't focus so much on fine-tuning the configuration file, which is why the misalignment of the digital assets and the real-world video capture is a little bit more noticeable. I was much more focused with getting some good work done with a moving camera in the virtual space and how the foreground layers would act in these situations. The results were awesome and the usage of the studio really allowed me to create some awesome and compelling video in live time. Being able to do this and show virtual experiences like this in live time is extremely important in the process of developing digital, augmented and virtual reality experiences. When we're able to develop for virtual reality in this way, it translates the VR development experience into a perspective that people are accustomed to for environmental understanding. As a human factors engineer, this is exciting because it allows us to use standard observational methods when conducting usability testing, such as effectiveness, efficiency and satisfaction. Additionally, this makes the development process a collaborative experience because everybody in the room is able to fully understand what's going on in the virtual space. This even opens up our ability to accurately recreate augmented reality experiences using tools such as the built-in camera on the Vive and our knowledge of lifetime chroma keying. 
There's a disconnect in the shared experience of virtual reality right now, and the best way to solve that is through mixed reality. This allows people to see the entire virtual environment as well as how the user occupies that space. Using green screens, lifetime chroma keying, a motion tracked camera, and virtual reality, we can create a composite third person perspective of users in a virtual environment. I'm really happy with how my project unfolded, but it's not perfect and there's still more work to do. I could spend more time perfecting things like a variable field of view for the camera so the in-game camera adjusts when it gets closer to a subject. I've also started working with a little bit of Unity development so I could build out my own virtual experiences and applications then showcase them with mixed reality. Mixed reality adds a new level to the exciting fields of augmented and virtual reality. The technology is incredible and I'm super excited to keep working toward expanding my knowledge. My name is Dylan Hong and this has been my summer project as an intern at PTC.